Today we are going to analyze China's 2060 carbon neutral promise. It all started when Chinese President Xi Jinping stood at the United Nations General Assembly through a video conference and made a surprising promise. He said China will reach peak carbon emissions by 2030 and become carbon neutral by 2060. Now on the surface, this sounds amazing, right? It's like that moment when the most notorious villain in a movie suddenly says, from today I will be a hero. But the question is, should we clap or should we doubt? Let's dig deeper. Now let's understand what does it mean when we hear the term carbon neutral. On the surface, carbon neutral by 2060 sounds clean and noble, almost like a promise of revival. But when you look deeper, you realize it's not as simple as counting apples in a basket. Now the main question is how do you actually measure carbon neutrality? So what happens is that scientists don't measure individual carbon dioxide molecules floating around. Instead, they use national greenhouse gas inventories, basically detailed reports of how much carbon dioxide is emitted from each sector like power plants, industries, transport, agriculture, etc. These are combined with carbon sinks like forests that absorb carbon dioxide and technologies like carbon capture machines to calculate the balance. Then international bodies like the IPCC and UN frameworks cross-check these numbers. But here's the catch. These are estimates, not exact counts. A lot depends on the honesty and accuracy of reporting. And we all know countries and organizations can play with data and they have always done that to suit their needs. Now, offsetting carbon emissions through projects like tree planting is tricky. Who ensures those trees will survive 50 years? Technologies like carbon capture are still experimental and extremely expensive. And countries often export pollution by shifting their dirty industries abroad and still claiming their emissions are reducing at home. So you see, it creates space for greenwashing just like brainwashing. It appears eco-friendly while continuing harmful practices behind the curtain. Now the next important question is, why do countries still announce such goals? It's partly politics and economics. Announcing a big, far-off target like carbon neutral by 2060 buys goodwill and eases international pressure. It also signals to markets that we are going to invest big in renewables, EVs and clean tech. That attracts investors and secures dominance in future industries. For countries like China, it's less about trees and molecules. It's more about shaping the next global economy. That is the reason China is making such big announcements. Now let me tell you more in the context of China. So basically China is saying we will burn less coal, we will invest more in renewable energies like solar, wind and hydropower, we will modernize dirty factories and promote clean technologies, we will push electrical vehicles, plant more trees and tighten pollution rules. Sounds like a dream plan, right? But my friend, whenever China takes such a huge step, there's always more to the story. Now comes the real question, how will China actually pull this off? Becoming carbon neutral by 2060 is like climbing Mount Everest without oxygen. It looks impossible at first. But here's the twist. China already makes the largest number of solar panels and wind turbines in the world. By investing in renewable energy, they are not just reducing pollution, they are also capturing the global clean energy market. Next, they are modernizing industries. Old smoky factories are either being forced to shut down or adopt cleaner technology. Then comes the electric vehicle revolution. China already has one of the biggest EV markets in the world. Charging stations are being built everywhere and subsidies are being given so that people ditch petrol and diesel cars. And of course, tree planting campaigns. Just like politicians in India before elections promised big projects, China is promising massive afforestation drives. Now whether they fully deliver or not, only time will tell. But then why now? This is the part we all need to think about. Why would a country like China, which always put growth before environment, suddenly changes its tune? There are three big reasons behind it. Number one, international pressure. In climate meetings, China was always being called out as the world's biggest polluter. Now this move cleans up their image. Reason number two, cities like Beijing and Shanghai are choking in pollution. People can't breathe properly. Health costs are rising and anger is spreading. The government has to show its citizens that it cares. And reason number three, economic pressure. The world is moving towards green products. Western countries are even talking about carbon taxes. If China keeps polluting, their exports will become costly and they will lose business. So shifting to clean energy is also an economic survival strategy. But let's be honest, China never plays only one game. There's always a hidden angle. By investing in clean technology today, they are preparing to dominate the industries for tomorrow. Just like they once dominated manufacturing and electronics, now they want to dominate solar, wind, electric vehicles and all things that are green. 
and then there is another angle too by reducing dependence on oil imports china becomes more energy independent that means less vulnerability to global politics finally by taking the climate pledge china also puts pressure on developed nations it's like they are saying look we are still a developing country but even we are making sacrifices what about you now that is clever now you may ask another important question how will china balance economic growth with reducing emissions well instead of slowing growth they're simply changing its direction heavy industries that create smoke and pollution will slowly give way to high tech industries services and green jobs they are also investing in energy efficiency making goods with less energy cost and that way products become cheaper and more competitive and let's not forget research and innovation by developing new technologies they are not just solving the pollution problem but also creating products they can sell to the world so if you look at the story of china's climate pledge it is not just about saving the planet it's about image money power and preparing for the next global economic shift maybe china sees that the old system of endless growth and pollution is dying and they want to be the first to lead in the new world of clean energy the question is are they really turning into a hero or they are just writing a new script where they again play the smartest player on the field i hope you found this video informative thank you for watching i'll see you in the next one